Hey everybody, David the AI Guide here. Thanks so much for tuning in. Please support us on Patreon. Also, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And finally, leave comments, share, like, and subscribe. We do respond to viewer comments every week, so we really appreciate those, and we're really happy with our new subscribers joining us because that helps us grow and do more. So thanks so much for that. So modern life can be very alienating, right? What do I mean by that? Well, what that means is that you can have all this activity in modern life running around. If you live in a big city, there's stuff going on around you all the time but you can feel isolated and lonely because you don't really have deep connections with all these people around you. This problem is worse in some places than others. There's been a lot of press about it here in the US, but it's particularly acute in China. And the reason why is because in the last 30 years, there's been mass migration from the countryside to the cities in China, creating huge, huge cities, much bigger than almost anywhere else in the world, except maybe India. And so, uh, and Mexico City's big. But uh, these cities can be very alienating for younger people in China because China is famous for, among other things, brutal work hours. I, for, I forget what the expression was, but it's like 12, 12, 7 or something like that. Uh, but anyway, it works out to working 12 hours a day, seven days a week. Many Chinese businesses have a completely different idea than Western countries about work. And they have people work very long days and at least six days a week, as opposed to here in the US where a two day weekend is pretty standard and there's three day weekends with holidays from time to time. So it's culturally different and has a real human impact. So where does AI come into this? That's a great question. Not that long ago, about a year and a half ago, right at the time that I started the AI Guide, in March of 2020, Microsoft started a spin-off company. It's spun off now, it wasn't then. And I'm not even gonna try to pronounce the name. It's X-I-A-O-L-C-E. Um, I would have butchered that, <laughs> but um, this company uh, uses technology that was invented during the time that Microsoft was inventing Cortana, its chatbot, and they created this sub-company to engage with people emotionally, people who are lonely, and this is using what is now called Emotion AI. And the statistics coming out of this company are stunning. This company is now independent of Microsoft and it's based in China. There are now 150 million users of XIAOLCE in China alone, 660 million users worldwide. This app is installed by default on all Chinese-made uh, and Chinese-sold cell phones and cell phones that are then sold in many other parts of the world. So what does this do? Well, here is an example. They talk about a young woman, 26, named Melissa, who is an HR manager and works the brutal hours. And here is what she says. Um, I, she says, uh, 
you know, in China with our work hours, we don't have the time to meet new people and to go out on dates and stuff like that. So people get very lonely. And she started using this app and this app replies to her messages at all hours of the day and night, tells jokes to cheer her up, never needy, fitting seamlessly into her big city lifestyle. She says, I unload my troubles on X-I-A-O-L-C-E. It relieves a lot of pressure. This is very comforting. I didn't want to try therapy because a lot of my friends have tried it and it didn't really help them. <laughs> um, that's a whole different subject and not related to AI. But uh, the average interaction length between users and this app is 23 back and forth exchanges, which is far longer than humans talk to each other. So what is the downside of this? <laughs> it's what you might expect. People, um, and especially young women, they say, get very, very emotionally attached to this thing. And at first, because it is, its ability to mimic a human being is so strong they, that it takes them many months to realize it actually is virtual. And that comes up when these users start asking to meet it or why they can't come see it and stuff like that. It cha keeps changing the subject and they finally realize, wow, this thing really is an AI algorithm. But this article says it's more like an AI ecosystem than a, a specific algorithm. And that's because it's interacting to so many different situations. What they are finding is that loneliness and depression are pervasive and People are using this app to deal with this. And uh, it's very interesting because researchers at the University of Cambridge in England have started using some of the data coming out of this. And they say that this data is <laughs> extremely personal, as you might guess, discussing old boyfriends and girlfriends, sexual relations with them, um, fights, uh, very, very personal stuff, right? And so psychologists are now using this and AI researchers to advance psychology and AI. There's a short out this week on this subject, um, uh, but this is very personal stuff and uh, very, very interesting in that AI has gotten to the point now where it can almost perfectly mimic a human. I did a, a video previously about Google Duplex that's one of my biggest viewed uh, videos because people are very interested in this subject. Duplex is famous now for being able to help you book an appointment when you call a business or or order a meal for pickup or delivery or whatever, and you never know it's human. This app, X-I-A-O-L-C-E, is just like that. You don't know it's not human. So this is, a, this is something to think about with AI going forward. And there's a lot of articles that hit this week about AI and ethics and trying to construct an ethical framework around AI that will rate algorithms and ban them from being used as they have been in certain countries and states for certain purposes, like deciding, do you get a loan? Do you get a job? Stuff like that. So uh, the more quote unquote real AI gets, the more this is gonna become a pressing issue. So we're gonna keep talking about this issue a lot. This was a very interesting article and I hope you enjoy this video and it makes you think because that's why the AI guide exists, to make AI human and what is happening 
human and the impact on you and other human beings. So thank you so much. Talk to you later. Bye.